So hello everyone. Uh, we have, I think, some somebody not. Oh, here we go. Attendees. So hello. Um, and um, we still have two minutes, so minute and a half. So I will wait uh, for maybe a few more persons. Hello, Anna. Hello, Rovanza. Hello, Udesh and Benga. Welcome. We'll be starting in approximately one minute. Hello, Faisal. Hey. So I think that uh, you can write things in a chat as questions, but um, and please do, you can write it during my presentation and after my presentation, uh, but maybe it won't be easy for you to say something on a microphone. So that may not work. Hello, Edo. I'm glad to see you. And I think it's four and I think um, it's the time to start. So, Welcome everyone, and uh, today uh, I will be talking about the Master of Science program in Geoengineering. Um, and uh, first thing I want to say, welcome to Alta, hopefully. Um, we start with Alta introduction, um, then we go about the challenges and why study with us, why study geoengineering about the study program and what you can do afterwards. Um, and to introduce myself, my name is Wojtek Solowski. I'm an associated professor in geotechnical engineering. I'm also the program director. And today with me um, as a panelist uh, and a person very knowledgeable about admission procedures and uh, all other issues from more technical side about application process and what is happening when you are a student is Katri Koistinen. Hi, nice to ha have so many participants here. Yes, and Katri is um, posing um, at uh, the background of Alto. Um, uh, central building, which was uh, designed by Alvar Alto as the whole campus actually, well, a part of the newest, new, newest buildings which we have. So as for Alto, um, it was created in 2010, so it's a relatively young university, but we are very strongly building on Helsinki University of Technology, and this is where geoengineering program would be otherwise. Um, we are also cooperating with the University of Art and Design in Helsinki, which is now School of Art at Alto and Helsinki School of Economics, which is now School of Business at Alto. Um, and um, when you are a student, you can take courses from all those disciplines. Uh, Alto is quite well, recognized internationally. Um, we, we are considered a good university. We taking us as a young university. If we are not taking us as young university, it's still not too bad, but not written here. Um, but um, we generally are um, covering many disciplines. We are reaching from arts to business, to engineering, to product design. And um, generally there are lots of 
interesting things happening, which may not be happening at other universities because we are close together. And uh, uh, if you want to go for a course for a, um, design of clothes and then architecture and then uh, engineering and then uh, computer science, yes, we have it all here. Our campus is uh, now much bigger than it used to be. We have new buildings uh, for School of Business, for School of Arts, and also new buildings for laboratories. So there are quite a lot of new things here, including student unions facilities, which perhaps are those you are most interested in. And the campus is becoming more and more lively. So. There, is, there are things to do here. There are ways to spend free time here. And um, as a leader at technical education in Finland, uh, we are quite happy about our campus and um, especially about the fact that you can go play tennis and uh, next to you, there will be your teacher or professor playing tennis. Same place, same court in Otaniemi, uh, same price. <laughs> so um, it is, uh, we are all mixing uh, together very much. Um, Finland is also a good place altogether. Um, it's a stable, well governed country. Um, the Finns really like to say that they are one of the happiest in the world. This is surprising um, knowing how gloomy it can be here in November, but uh, the Finns uh, can maintain high spirit despite difficulties and uh, kind of go forward. I even have a special word in Finnish for that, um, this quality of Sisu. Um, there is not much hierarchy here. It's clean, it's very safe or if you are coming from not so safe uh, country, amazingly safe, um, the nature is close and we are well connected to the Nordics and Europe. But most importantly, we need to talk about geoengineering today. And uh, if you ask me why to study geoengineering, I would say, First of all, because you will get a very nice job afterwards. So that's definitely something. Um, we are a bit of, have a bit of a struggle because our students get nice jobs a bit too early. So um, it's almost enough to say, I'm studying geoengineering, please employ me and the guys are employing you. Um, this, is, this makes studying a bit more difficult because we do teach students quite advanced things and uh, with a lot of work, it's difficult to, to combine. But uh, I must say that uh, the job prospects are quite excellent and we do aim to give you world-class education. So my take is that we teach um, well, this thought may be in other 10 to 20 universities in Finland, uh, in Europe, maybe 50 in the world. And this is, this is the level where we want to have our teaching. Um, we have a very long tradition of excellence in teaching in Finland. And um, um, at Alto, this, this is still going strong. And um, we are quite bold in introducing modern subjects into our curriculum and uh, basically teach for the future, not teach for the past. And overall, we are decently high ranked in the world. So top 100 for mining and mineral technology, which I think geoengineering fits in. We also have links to civil engineering. Civil engineering is a bit lower. And we are top 50 in the world in this uh, mining and mineral technology when you look at publication in best journals. So I would say not too bad. And um, we also have 
exceptional community. And that's because the students start to work early and they work while they are at the program. They work while doing their thesis and they work afterwards. And we as professors and teachers, we are involved in this process. So we quite often advise the student where to work at the beginning. Then we advise them with their thesis and their kind of research subjects during their work. And then we meet them regularly in all sorts of professional events, uh, at least yearly. So this is something like a big community which, um, which stays there for a very long time. And in the program, we have three three areas in principle we are looking at. Uh, rock engineering, mm -hmm. geotechnical engineering, and highway engineering. So rock engineering with um, sort of what is below, tunneling is especially important. Uh, we have something about mineral resources. We have something about engineering geology. We have some courses which are strictly moving to mining if you want to. But typically, rock engineering is more of the direction most of the students take. And this takes us more towards geotechnical engineering, where we are mm -hmm. looking at the slope stability, foundations, soil mechanics. And this links to road structures and highways and design of highways and highway engineering. Nowadays, also a little bit of railway engineering and designing of railways, but uh, formally we are still mainly focusing on road engineering. So why? Well, we basically want to teach you to solve things. Very few other guys in the world who graduate from master program can solve. So we teach about soil structure interaction and how to model it with finite element method. Um, we show you that you can apply this knowledge to deal with cutting edge engineering problems like constructing nuclear waste storage. We have one in Finland being constructed for high level waste in all kilowatt. Mm. Um, we are doing research on that, and uh, we are replicating experiments related to that safety of the storage. Um, we are teaching you how to deal with landslides and quick clays, as well as soft clays, typical for Finland. Um, we are um, preparing you to build tunnels. One that may still come is one from Helsinki to Tallinn. It would be one of the longest tunnels in the world underwater. Let's see. Now we are very interested in geothermal energy. We have one heat well in Otaniemi. We are talking a lot about energy storage in the rocks, hydrogen storage in the rocks. Um, as well as uh, clean and uh, low cost heating. We have projects on wind turbines and we are teaching quite a bit of wind turbine. We started with the onshore. Nowadays, we are talking about the offshore wind turbines more and more. And that's because uh, um, in Finland, the onshore wind turbines maybe are not there yet but um, the permissions are given and now the companies are looking for offshore more and more. And we are talking about roads, design, maintenance, recycling, reuse of materials, and um, how to make the roads and railways better. So in, in, in principle now in Finland, there is a shift towards high-speed railway. And um, we have quite a lot of master thesis which are related to railway engineering. We have two years of study, three study paths. You can choose more than one. And you should get 120 credits. So as a typical student, you get a summer job in the first holidays. 
Unfortunately, now the part-time work in second year is more and more replaced by part-time work in the first year. Now you get usually fully paid salary for a master thesis. And uh, after that thesis, if you do anyhow decent job, usually the company employs you immediately. So you have your first job immediately after finishing or even during the studies. We have six courses that we want everyone to take. So this is the six courses, geotechnics and finite element method in uh, geoengineering. Um, these are mostly related to geotechnical engineering and soil mechanics, but not only. We have building materials technology, uh, which is related to overall materials. We have rock excavation and engineering geology for rock engineering path, we have structure design roads. Um, and these ones are obligatory for everyone. You need to know something about each of the areas and then you choose one or two to specialize in. So if it's roads, it would be geometric design of roads. Um, it would be bituminous materials and mixture. It would be road maintenance and rehabilitation. Um, if you want rocks, rock construction and uh, um, some other rock courses, which are kind of mining courses, perhaps. Um, our second year course we have about um, uh, rock mechanics are definitely the ones. And if you look in uh, geotechnical, then foundation engineering and advanced soil mechanics and numerical methods in geotechnics would be something of use. Sustainability, reinforced concrete structures and similar are also suggested as you need to know something about structure engineering. And second year is mainly 30 credits for the master thesis, but then the master thesis can be extended to 40 credits or even more with a special assignment. Uh, we have project course in geoengineering, uh, which covers basically all the knowledge. Um, we have seminar where you learn how to write scientific papers. And then we have some other courses, work mechanics, economic geology, and mineral economics for those of you more interested in rock engineering, possibly even mining. We have some management courses. We have sustainability and environmental engineering operation management. The thing is that these elective studies are really up to you. So up to 30 credits, so approximately six courses can be taken from any place, anywhere at Alto, as long as you're accepted to the course. So as such, we suggest suggestions. Quite often we advise you to go for uh, internships. Um, summer job is pretty much everyone. Part-time employment in second year is very typical. Now it becomes typical also in the first year and on top of that, we try to send you abroad for half a year. It could be Nordics, it could be Europe, it could be Asia. We have now also something in Americas. So we have quite a lot of universities we cooperate with. Mm -hmm. And then after you graduate, you usually do have quite a career. First of all, high salary, um, not unusual that after a few years from graduation, the students have salary, which is very high from my perspective. There is lack of monotony, there is a um, new job and there are challenging jobs. You're out of graduates, nobody will give you the boring ones. That's why they are paying you high salary so they can do something special. New technologies are coming all the way, and that's why we are preparing you to 
use those new technologies and to adjust and deal with them. But as you can deal with them, again, you get high salary. And uh, in Finland, generally, there are large investments in infrastructure. And uh, as there are large investments in infrastructure, and three times more designers retired and is coming to the market, you can get high salary. Um, as for students' life here, um, I would say it's a very closely knit community. Um, that includes not only students, but also teachers and industry. And um, I would say you can quite easily get a social network for life. Uh, this is this is really relevant if you stay in Finland, because if you choose to go to Australia, of course, uh, your contacts perhaps will uh, not be that relevant, but nonetheless, um, I think the students' life is, is quite good here, but of course, I mean, I'm, I'm participating. Well, I'm not really participating, so what can I say? I still think it's more or less of work hard, play hard mentality. And I must say that our student studies are advanced. They can be challenging, especially when you work, and most of the students work. But we really appreciate this community because this community really helps everyone to cope. There are many people to ask. You're never alone with your problems. And as you have people to ask, and there are lots of them who can help you, then things go on well quite much easier than otherwise. Um, there are some students' benefits in Finland. There are discounts, especially lunch, can be very cheap, but also in some other places. Malta has some housing for students. It's uh, more from the students' uh, organizations, but nonetheless, um, there are some preferential housing for, for you. And then we have health service, which is quite general and good. And we have some uni sports services um, on the campus and outside of campus. So um, there are quite a lot of things you can, um, you can do in Finland relatively cheaply when you are a student. And uh, I, I think it's a very good place to be a student, to be honest. Admissions, so once a year we have it. Um, end of the year, I think this year, the admission period. There are some tuition fees if you are not from EU and economic European area. And we have some merit-based scholarship, which basically cover those tuition fees. And a part of this admission services, there is also a link about studying geoengineering master program. So I uh, do hope that I will see you around next year. And uh, my greetings are joined by those of Professor Mikhail Rina from Rock Mechanics and Rock Engineering, Professor Kortiala Tantu from Geotechnical Engineering, also head of the department, Professor um, Augusto Canone Falcetto from Highway Engineering, and Professor Yussi Leveinen from Engineering Geology. So we hope to see you soon. Well, we hope you apply, we hope you come, we hope you will learn from us. And um, now I think it's really time for questions. So anyone has any questions perhaps? We have lively chat questions. So I can answer some. How to get a research topic for the master thesis? Well, typically the student finds it. So generally you are working, you're having your summer job. The company you're working, they want 
you to work with them and they think then maybe you could do a master thesis on this subject. This is the most typical, around 80% of students find the subject this way. Um, the rest, uh, we have some research projects, we advertise and try to get students to do the master thesis on that subject. It's sometimes difficult because most of the students have already the subject. Uh, if we have the research project, again, this is paid, salaried master thesis. Um, and uh, with some students we help. So we sometimes have contacts, we know about the master thesis which are around and we try to try to help. Is there any chance to join some research other than the research for master thesis? Um, after the studies, you can decide to do the doctoral degree after graduation. There are certain rules about it. Uh, you need to have high enough average rate and uh, well, you need to be accepted by a supervising professor for, for the doctoral research. Um, there are some scholarships given by the Dean every year. So there are some chances um, to get those. Otherwise you need to hope that the professor has financing for you because you need to get full salary as a doctoral student. Um, research in geohazard, landslide, liquefaction, and seismic. Um, landslides, definitely, yes. Liquefaction, a bit less usual sometimes. Seismic, not so much. We have one professor who is specializing in seismic, mainly for bridges. Um, we have a lot of problems with vibration, though, which is very similar. Um, country specific document requirements are Sri Lanka not included. I think Katri can say maybe something about that. Can you repeat the question? I was just re reading. Specific document requirements in the web. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The there is uh, not included in the list. So the documents are all in. Uh, I always recommend to if there is uh, questions relating to the admission documents that you contact this admissions at alto.fi because uh, we get the document applications after they have made this uh, kind of administrative check and we are very careful that we don't advise you so that we don't give wrong answers. So please, if you have any questions re relating to the documents contact, I, I will write the address here. Oh. So I first recommend check, read the page, pages, and then if you have questions, admissions at, at alt.fi is the question place to. Uh, and it, the, there is, we have nowadays this, uh, I think, Finland government scope. Do you mean Finnish scholarship? This 5,000, or is there another scholarship system? We have basically two types of Jewish scholarships. We have this uh, 150 or 50% 50 scholarship from tuition fees, and then uh, the top of the those who got full 100 percent scholarship can get also the so-called Finnish scholarship, which is five thousand euros at the moment. Yeah. But, have, uh, yep. Okay, we have a question about the IELTS requirements again. This, unfortunately, we should again direct you towards admissions at alto.fi. Um, so this is not something we can comment on. Um, and then we have question from Anna. I'm currently working in geotechnical engineering in Helsinki. I'm interested to improve my skills, but don't want to leave workplace. How, 
how to do it so to combine the two. Uh, we have students who are working full time and studying. Um, generally, it's not easy. Um, you need some flexibility from your workplace because we have tried and we know that online teaching doesn't work as well as on-site teaching. As such, we quite often record the lectures, but uh, we still strongly suggest participation in them. Not everyone records the lectures. Some professors have courses where you have to participate in the lectures. There are some very interactive courses where basically the participation is strictly required. So in those cases, you really need to talk to your um, employer and uh, you know, a few hours a day or a doubt. Um, and uh, when you have that sort of flexibility, it becomes possible. Um, if your work is that you work from eight to four every day, no flexibility from the employer, I would say it is not possible anymore because you need to you need to attend classes, you need to be in the exercises, you need to be during the exams. You need to you need to be around a bit. Um, it doesn't mean you have to attend everything, and uh, it doesn't mean that you you kind of have to be here every day for all the courses. But you need to be in the campus from time to time, and in some courses this is more required. In some courses this is less required. In all the courses, if you choose not to come, not to be in the campus, it does require much more work. So it is with full-time work, it is very difficult. Part-time work, yes, this, this is very common, uh, but full-time, very tough. Any other questions? So um, if there are no other questions, maybe I, I mean, we still have somebody about Lorenzo, but Katri answered already. I think that there are no new questions. So in this case, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for listening. And as I mentioned, I hope I will see you next September, next October at Alto as students of geoengineering. Thank you so much. And don't hesitate to say if you later find question, if you have a question relating to studies and the program, you can ask from me or uh, Wojtek. And if you have question relating to the admission process, please do ask from admissions at alta.fi. I think you have already found our program page in alto.fi where the program is introduced. So you find our, and also in this study path, I think up in the book is Lisa, correct me if I remember the name where the admissions are done. There are also our contact information available. But the guideline is that if the question relates to the documents and the admission process itself, please do contact admissions. And if it con con relates to the program and studies, then please do contact us. And hopefully, also on my behalf, hope to see you next autumn. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.